Rosh Hashanah is on its way, and we all want a favorable judgment. In this high and holy holiday of Rosh Hashanah, the whole world gets judged. We want a favorable judgment where our wishes get answered, we are granted another year of life, and we are, of course, crowning Hashem as king over every aspect of our life. We want to show Hashem, Hashem, please grant me all your gifts that you have given me. I am here for you. I am ready. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a vessel that is worthy of another life, uh, another year of life. And I'm here to share with you five powerful strategies in order to ask for a favorable judgment from Hashem. The goal is for us to not only learn about these goals, learn about these strategies, but also to implement them on our own level in small ways. The first strategy is supplementing our prayers with actions. In other words, pray for what you want, pray for more, pray to get what you want to get. At the same time, you want to also supplement it with actions. During the high and holy holidays, we all beg Hashem for another year of life and a favorable judgment from Hashem. We pray with all our heart, we pray, we pray with all our soul for Hashem to remove, to tear up any horrible decrees that await us in the future. We pray Hashem grant us together with our families, our children, our spouse, that the rest of our beloved families, they also be granted good health and financial stability. Aside from praying, our sages have taught us that there is something else we can do. We can add to our spiritual merits by in certain actions that will elicit heavenly mercy. So we tell Hashem, Hashem, I'm going to get closer to you. I'm going to do more mitzvot. Now, it's important for us to remember that we're not making a deal with Hashem. We're not saying, now I will uh, do this mitzvah and please make it happen for me. Uh, grant my wish. Enable me to get a better job or a bigger home or whatever it is that you are wishing to have. You don't want to do that, but you do want to show Hashem that He is the one to grant you everything that you need. In other words, you're praying for it and you're saying, Hashem, I'm partnering with you. I know that you can give me anything. I want to get closer to you. I want to show you that I'm worthy to get what I need. Okay, the next one is compassion for others. We want to show compassion for others through our words, through our actions, of course, through our thoughts as well. The merits that a person earns from treating others with compassion are so incredibly great and powerful that they can break through all of the barriers in heaven. In other words, when we treat other people with compassion, with empathy, with sympathy, that is, will enable Hashem also to have compassion towards us. The way we treat other people is the way Hashem treats us. So if I'm compassionate to this person, even though they don't deserve it, even though they may have hurt me, and I, I, know I really feel for them, I help them, I look at them in positive ways, I look, I look at them, uh, I look at their positive qualities, Hashem will have compassion for me, even for the wrongs that I did as well. The third one is set your pride aside. In other words, another way, another way to secure a favorable judgment in heaven is forgiving others who have wronged us. It is very difficult to forgive other people, especially when they were the ones who have hurt us and they were wrong. Right? Sometimes we see how we have also been wrong, but sometimes it's just the other person. And to truly forgive and let go and uh, give this person another chance is really an incredible, incredible act. In Maseches Rosh Hashanah 17a, there the Rava states, whenever a person forgives others when one has been wronged, the heavenly court will erase all his sins. As the Pasuk states, he forgives sins and disregards inequity. For whom does Hashem forgive sin? For one who disregards inequity. In other words, the offense is committed against him by others. So those people who have wronged us, we need to really sit down and introspect 
you know what, I'm going to forgive them. And look at yourself. You have probably done things to other people, either by mistake, hopefully not on purpose. We all make mistakes, we're human. And you so desperately want that person to look at you in a different way, give them for you to be given another chance. So let's demonstrate that to other people. When we show other people that we want to set our pride aside, our ego aside, and say, you know what? I'm giving you another chance. I forgive you. I want to make a new start. And that is a beautiful, beautiful way of living. And that is what Hashem wants from us. Rashi explains that when a person manifests this trait, Hashem dro simply drops the charges against him in heaven, even if he is actually guilty of sin. One can experience incredible, marvelous, miraculous salvations after forgiving others for things that they have done towards them. The fourth one is the Torah saves and protects. As we, as we look onward for extra merits to bring with us on the day of judgment, we would do well to keep in mind, and it is a good idea to keep in mind, that there is no greater source of merit or reward than Torah. As the Navi states in Yirmiyahu 33, 25, If not for my covenant being fulfilled day and night, I would not have set the natural laws of heaven and earth in place. This basically means that the very existence of the whole world depends on the study of Torah. People who devote and dedicate themselves to Torah study at all times are in essence actually the people who sustain the world and give life to everyone in it. The world is able to exist only through the existence of Torah. The Torah is here for us in order to get closer to Hashem. Hashem created the world. Hashem created the Torah. Then He created the world. We are here for the Torah. We are here to live by the Torah. If there's no Torah, there's no point of living. So we, we need to understand that those of us who are observant, who are trying, even if we're uh, not doing everything, we are holding up the world. Every mitzvah that you do, you are holding up the world and your mitzvot are causing cosmic ramifications in heaven. This is a fundamental concept in Judaism and belief in Judaism that the Torah holds up the world. Torah study holds up the world. Now think about it. There are about 7.7 .7 billion people in the world living today and only about 15 million are Jewish people. Approximately one-fifth of the Jewish nation, 3 million people are most likely observant of mitzvot, meaning they keep Shabbat, they keep kosher, out of 3 million, there are about 1 million people who study Torah on a daily basis, but they are the ones who sustain the lives of 7.5 billion living people on earth. This means that every one of these Jews is responsible for the lives of 7,500 people. Now that is an incredible, incredible, incredible idea. And the truth that a person lives by it will put a bounce in their step, give them that encouragement that they are so incredibly important and every mitzvah that you do is incredibly important and Torah study in and of itself is an incredible, incredible way of living and uplifting the world. Okay. The fifth one is tzedakah. Tzedakah is charity. Charity overturns an evil decree. The Torah states in Devarim 26.12, When you finish tithing your produce in the third year, the year of tithing for the poor, you shall give it to the levy, the convert, the orphan, and the widow, and they will eat at your gates until they are satisfied. After the distribution of the tithes, the Torah requires a verbal affirmation that these mitzvot have been fulfilled, which concludes with a prayer. In Devarim 15 it says, Look down from your holy abode from the heavens, and bless your nation Israel. In his commentary in Bereshit 1816, Rashi states that while all the variances of the world hashkafa in Tanakh usually connote divine wrath and punishment, here the merit of giving charity to the poor is so great that it completely changes um, heav heavenly anger 
or wrath into benevolence, into kindness. In other words, charity really overturns your the decrees placed on you, may have been placed on you, the evil decrees. The Talmud in Bhagavad Basra 11a states that an act of tzedakah can transform heavenly, heavenly wrath into mercy. So we're going to wrap it up and I'm going to share with you five practical ways in order how can you actually practice these ideas, these strategies in order to have a favorable ju judgment, favorable judgment on Rosh Hashanah. We hope to merit to be granted a favorable judgment during this Rosh Hashanah. Now, we know that life is all about overcoming challenges. We're not here to have a big house, to have uh, so many children, to have uh, a beautiful home, to live in a beautiful neighborhood. This is not the point of life. The point of life is to overcome challenges. And the challenges are whatever circumstances Hashem brings into my life. And every age and phase and stage of life changes. Where you were today wasn't where you were yesterday. So life is about challenges. I'm supposed to overcome the challenges that are placed in my life at this moment. We don't pray for challenges, but we have challenges. We want to pray to Hashem that this year we will do even better. So how can we put these five strategies into place? Number one, put prayers into, into action, right? Take something upon yourself. Take something upon it. Do a mitzvah. Maybe besides pray more, maybe you're hoping to dress more modestly. Maybe you're saying birkat amazon, which is um, uh, prayers we say after eating bread. Uh, well, maybe you're saying it with um, more intent and more concentration. Maybe you're sitting when you're saying a bracha. Maybe you're saying Tehillim every day, which are psalms that we say. David um, Melech psalms, as well as others. So we want to make sure that we actually put it into action. It's not just something that we're saying. It's something that we're actually doing as well. Number two, how to have compassion for others. It's very easy to say this to someone. It's very easy to hear this, but it's very hard to do. However, just like with every habit, the more you do it, the better you get at it. You are what you practice. So compassion for others is judging people favorably. Think of three positive attributes they have that you admire, right? Before lashing out, before thinking about the negative, or before getting into you know, storm of thoughts that are going to get you in a bad mood about a person, think of three things you really admire them. And everybody has character traits that, that are admirable, even people who are very difficult, right? It may be that their stubbornness to do the wrong thing, you admire their stubbornness so you could learn from that stubbornness to do the right thing. Okay, so you have to remember that everybody actually makes sense to themselves. So, so try to see things from their perspective, even if it doesn't make sense to you. So I thought of this parable, uh, I was also to think of this parable, where let's say a person drinks coffee, coffee without sugar, and he's enjoying his, his coffee. Now, another person just can't understand how is it possible to enjoy coffee without sugar. So he drinks coffee with not only syrup, but milk and whipped cream, and uh, it's so delicious, and of course sugar, and now they both can't understand each other. But if one understands it, let's say if it's a spouse, a spouse with a spouse, if they understand that this one likes it this way and the other one likes it this way, and they won't have it any other way because that's how they enjoy it, they will have to understand that and accept it. Now, most of the time we don't understand people, but we need to accept them for who they are and how they are. Um, it's especially true in marriage. Okay, so accepting them and understanding that everybody really makes sense to themselves and having compassion for others, just like you want people to forgive you or, or look at you in a way that's sympathetic or empathetic or in ways that um, you're looked at where people feel for you and, and um, look at your positive traits. That is the kind of person you want to be. And in this way, Hashem will also look at you that way. Number three is set your pride aside. Now, positive relationships are not about being right. They're all about being smart, right? A, a husband and wife can fight from now 
till tomorrow or colleagues or co-workers or siblings but one of them has to give in or one of them has to set their pride aside and say okay we'll have it your way or let's talk about this later right two fires can't can't make any peace they're only going to create a bigger fire so everything in the physical world is really a muscle for the spiritual world not everyone has social graces where they know how to thank give attention to others acknowledge others and appreciate what they have done for them know not to expect from others especially when you are you know a caretaker in your family you run your home the more people you have in your home you know have a wider threshold of, of okayness just like rabbi i believe rabbi pliskin talks about this um have a wider threshold of okayness have more things flow and be okay with do for others because you are at the right place place at the right time in other words be helpful to others not because they're going to do this back to me or because you want to get brownie points for it right you want to do for them because you're grateful hashem enabled you to do this right you were at the right place at the right time you were helpful not because you're really helping let's say it's your friend or your sister-in-law your sister your whoever it is you're helping a, a daughter of hashem or or a person a child of hashem you're helping them and that is an incredible privilege one of the biggest ways uh, a parent really rejoices is when their parent or when their when their children make shalom when the children have peace with themselves when they get along how how embarrassing for a parent and how heartbreaking when their children grow up and they're fighting they don't make shalom they're arguing over little things the most of life is trivialities is little things there's really nothing to get angry about and that is of course a life's work it's easy to say but we're all working on this um so be grateful that you can be helpful to others and that will help you um set your pride aside we know that we we learn from the torah that even if a person has an enemy they're supposed to help the enemy first versus their friend um if if if, if they're having trouble with the same thing if we need help right um number four is learn torah now make time to learn torah consistently this mitzvah is not just for for men men learn torah in a, for the sake of the mitzvah in and of itself women learn torah to apply it and we need to make time to learn consistently it's not a luxury it's not a privilege it's a necessity whatever subject you are interested in learn learn with a partner learn with you know um there's different sources online uh, learn with a friend um, learn as she wore as you're cooking as you're cleaning learning is incredibly important number five is give over charity we should be grateful to give because we can give we give without researching uh, you know researching about okay what is this person going to do with this money of course if this is if uh, you're giving a little bit like a dollar or two dollars considering this is what most people can can give without really hurting their uh, their bank account right so you give not because you're, you're saying oh that person is going to use their money for, for for dumb things that's not the point the point is you are a messenger to give you can give a dollar with a smile to be grateful that you're not on the other side begging for money or asking for tzedakah if you can't give charity at least give your smile an apology and wish them a great day don't treat them like don't let's not treat people like they're objects right everybody needs something no matter who they are tzedakah is incredibly incredibly important and we're really here in this world to help other people so just because i have the money is because i'm the i'm the holder of the money and so i need to give it away whether i spend it on myself spend it on others uh spend it on my family it doesn't really matter the goal is for us to really think about how can i implement these five strategies in order to be granted a favorable judgment may we all merit to be granted another year of life full of mitzvot and Bezrat Hashem, um, closeness to Hashem, appreciating the insights of Rav Shlomo Levenstein in his book, How Sweet is the Light, Leah Abramov, Being and Becoming, Awakening Awareness of Your Greatness and Potential.